Do you ever go for a drive on a nice twisty road, grabbing gear after gear, nailing the heel toe down shifts, and then think to yourself, why do transmissions exist? Why am I doing this? Basically, you're making up for the shortcomings of an internal combustion engine. Let's dive in and find out why. And then I'll prove to you that electric motors, and more specifically, the Tesla Plaid powertrain is making them obsolete. Welcome back to the channel. This is the third installment of the Tesla Plaid powertrain tech series, where we're looking at the performance specs a little deeper than I found elsewhere on the internet. Have you ever stepped back and asked, what is the goal of powertrain? It most simply can be described as a device that applies force to a vehicle that enables it to accelerate. There's lots of ways to apply force to a vehicle, an internal combustion engine, electric motor, human power, a steam engine, horses, jet engine, rocket thrusters, and many more. For the sake of this video, we'll hold off on the rocket thruster discussion, although it may make some fun future content, and we'll focus on the internal combustion engine and electric motors. When developing a powertrain, you start by understanding the performance targets of the vehicle, and then figure out how much force is needed to achieve those performance targets. You can then put those targets into a tractive force curve, which is also known as a tractive effort curve. This will then tell us how much force needs to be applied to a vehicle at all speeds. Let's take a look at the tractive force curve. It's defined by two main sections. The first section is defined by the maximum force needed. This is typically limited by the traction of tires or just the maximum needed to meet the acceleration targets. The second section is the peak power curve. This area is defined by a constant amount of power. There has to be a limit to the power your powertrain puts out, and this section just maximizes its benefit over a wide speed range. Now we will look at how an internal combustion engine and transmission achieves this tractive force curve. First, we will start out by optimizing the first gear ratio in the transmission to achieve our maximum force and get us to the peak part of the curve. As you can see, there's a gap at very low speeds. This exists because engines can't produce torque at very low RPM. So there's components that make up for this shortcoming, namely a clutch in a manual transmission or a torque converter in an automatic transmission. This allows the engine to stay in an optimal range while allowing the wheel speed to start from zero. Next, we have second gear to continue on when we run out of engine RPM in first, allowing the engine to stay at or near peak power. Same goes for third through sixth until we hit maximum vehicle speed, also known as Vmax. Just a quick side note, gears above five or six typically are used for optimizing fuel economy rather than maximizing force to the wheels, so we won't be talking about those today. Let's take a step back and look at a torque curve of an internal combustion engine. For this example, I'm going to be using the Audi 3.0 TFSI, a turbo V6 with 354 horsepower and 500 newton meters of torque. It's also mated to an eight speed transmission. This Audi engine has a nice wide torque curve starting from a relatively low RPM and a 6,500 RPM redline. This represents a good example of a modern turbo engine, but in the end, you will see it doesn't matter what engine I'm Using. Now let's compare to a single electric motor from the Plaid. The Tesla has a 470 newton meter peak torque, just slightly lower than the Audi. However, the Plaid motor achieves this peak torque from nearly zero RPM and goes all the way up to 20,000 RPM, maybe a little more, all while maintaining peak power. This is three times as much speed capability as the Audi and is starting to show why a transmission may not be necessary. Now let's calculate the tractive force curve for the Audi. Using the engine torque curve, gear ratios, and tire sizes, you can see the peak in first gear is a little bit more than 20,000 newtons or 4,600 pound force. Then it follows the peak power curve at 354 horsepower all the way out to the Vmax of 155 miles an hour. Then we will calculate the curve for the single plaid motor with the factory seven and a half to one gear ratio. See it achieves peak tractive force of around 10,000 newtons, but continues holding peak power all the way up to 200 miles per hour and maybe more. With this setup, it would be roughly equivalent to the performance of the Audi starting in third gear, but continues well past the Audi's top speed. But what if we could change the gear ratio with the plaid motor to achieve 
achieved the same 155 mile per hour Vmax. For this first calculation, we will use 20,000 RPM max motor speed. So solving for the gear ratio gives us 10.63 to one. It bumps the peak tractive force up to 14,000 newtons and now makes the single plaid motor equivalent to a turbo V6 from second gear all the way to top speed. Also notice that in the peak power part of the curve, this ratio change has no effect. This is due to the incredible power curve of the plaid motor. If we take this one step further, what if the plaid motor can spin to 25,000 RPM? Purely hypothetical at this moment, but not out of the realm of possibility. This would allow us to increase the gear ratio to 13.29 and increase peak tractive force to nearly 18,000 newtons. This would mean a single electric motor and simple reduction gear can compete with a turbo V6 and its multi-speed transmission over its full operating range. Now, if this hasn't already convinced you that transmissions are obsolete, let's take a look at the real way Tesla is achieving its dominating tractive force curve. It's something that internal combustion engines and transmissions cannot do. Can you guess it? Should be obvious by now, they add more motors. I know this doesn't come as a surprise, but look how adding a second motor improves the peak tractive force, but also adds more power at the same time, increasing the tractive force at higher vehicle speeds as well. Then adding a third motor further increases its peak tractive force to over 30,000 newtons, which is over 6,700 pound force of thrust pushing the car off the line. Tesla's plan of improving the torque, power, and speed range of the electric motor and just adding more motors instead of adding a transmission is a great strategy. It's one that many automotive OEMs will likely copy in the future. Thanks for watching. This is a relatively new channel, so I'd greatly appreciate it if you give this a thumbs up and comment down below.